Mr. Dettelbach, are, are you troubled by the rule? I mean, you told him one thing 10 years ago, and now you're directly contradicting that. Uh, the the, uh, stable, the stabilizing brake short barrel rifle rule, I assume, is the rule you're referring I'm, I'm to. I'm referring to the letter that was sent back on November 26, 2012, that Mr. Nell's referenced in his first line of questioning, where sure. you told, so, you uh, told the FTB finds that the submitted brace, when attached to a forearm, excuse me, a firearm, does not convert the weapon and would not alter its classification. Uh, now you're doing we, just, we, just the opposite. We have been, we have been public and in the rulemaking itself have <laughs> detailed that history and there were inconsistencies. However, there was also a situation, Mr. Chairman, where people were marketing products that had never been presented to ATF saying that they were was ATF Was that the only approved. time you told them, the only time you told the American people that it was okay? No, we look at specific well, let read, products. Let me read this, let me read this letter, March 5th, 2014, because this doesn't so much focus on the brace, focus on how the weapons used it. We have determined that firing a pistol from the shoulder would not cause the pistol to be reclassified as a short barrel rifle. We did not classify weapons based on how individuals use the weapon. So you told them not once, but twice that it was okay. And I'm just asking, does it bother you now that you are doing, you're making the change that's gonna impact millions of Americans? The rule was necessary in part because it needed to address inconsistency so that people could understand the definition of a short I just read two life. letters that were consistent. Both of them there, said it was fine. There were other letters that were not. You, have you ever found, has ATF ever found itself in this position where a rule change directly contradicts what you've told American citizens was okay and that's going to impact millions? millions of law-abiding citizens. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? Uh, respectfully, I don't believe that's the, the uh, uh, I agree millions with that of Americans summary of where millions we Millions of Americans aren't gonna be were, impacted? There, no, there were specific products that get presented for classification. Those products then sometimes change. They're not the same ones that are marketed. A and there was, I, there was inconsistency. The market is dynamic. It was necessary to do what it, notice and comment rulemaking, I think, is a I think better way to millions of Americans that. think the inconsistency is with the ATF because you told them one thing and now you're changing. What happens on May 31st? Oh, um, according to the rule. No, what happens on May 31st? According to the rule, people have, from the date the rule was, was published until that date, uh, to, to do one of several things. They can either detach the brace from the firearm and keep both, uh, uh, and they can attach that How about brace this? to another one. They got they to can. remove or destroy the brace, get a longer barrel, turn in or destroy the firearm, or register the firearm. Is that right? They got to do the, one they of those four things. They have to apply to register whether or not the application is ruled on. They're allowed to keep the, the, the item during that entire time so that they're not uh, held if accountable. If they don't for do that period. and the timeline runs out, what happens? to those individuals. They, know, they don't do those four things and the timeline is expired, what happens well, then? I, I assume that people who uh, are no, aware- no, I'm not asking, what, what happens if they don't do those well, four things? Well, I, I think that, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, as a prosecutor, I, I just wanna be accurate. What happens, a former prosecutor, what happens is, depending on the circumstance, if a person is unaware, right? They, they're not gonna be prosecuted for things that let's they're cut, unaware of. Let's cut to the chase, of. they could be a felon, right? Well, could be it, a felon. It, it depends on the facts and circumstances of each case. And of course, we would prioritize enforcement on gang members who are having these How are you? You mentioned people. enforcement. How are you going to enforce this? Uh, with going to go to gun ranges? What See, we will do is... going to go to manufacturers always... and look at the risk of people they sold braces to? What we, will, what we will do is we will, when we do a search warrant in a drug case and we discover an unlawful item, whether it's a machine gun or a Glock switch, or a short-barreled rifle that doesn't comply, we will consider that as one of the charges. There's no plan. Does the, gun, to, does to the gun Control Act or the National Firearms Act clearly and unambiguously prohibit pistol braces? Uh, it, pro, it doesn't prohibit anything. It calls for increased controls on short-barreled rifles. Not the gun control, but I'm just reading from the court decision yesterday in the Sixth Circuit where the, the, the judge oh, said the statute does not clearly and unambiguously prohibit bump stocks. The court went on to say for a decade the ATF has maintained that a bump stock is not a machine gun part, and the court said the ATF's own flip-flop on this position is one of the reasons why they ruled in favor of those opposing the rule you guys made. Seems to me we're in the same situation here. 
And yesterday, the Sixth Circuit gave us a strong ruling on the bump stock issue. I would anticipate that we're going to get other strong rulings on this issue as well.